Hey, what's going on? It's Justin from LA. Uh, documenting today an LAX drop off with the Ford Escape. Got a renter down there, uh, flying in super early in the morning. Uh, today it's July 10th, Saturday. They need the car at 7.30 a.m. Uh, so bright and early day today. Got up at five, did uh, like 30 minutes of cardio. Don't neglect your health, don't be uh, that person. <laughs> it's definitely something that we need to be grateful for. So I try to, you know, obviously work out multiple times a week. Um, and today I got a busy day, so obviously just had to wake up super early and get that in. Um, I started the drive down to LAX at 640. GPS says I'll get there around seven. So I'm trying to really closely monitor the time that it takes to do this today. So I can try to really get a good grasp on the amount of profit that this is generating in terms of an LAX drop off. Um, thank you to the people that watch these videos. Um, it seems like some Turo hosts, especially in the LA area, are getting some value out of these videos, which uh, is really cool to see. I'm, I'm really grateful that there's people that will take the time to leave a comment to say, hey, like this is something that's helpful for me, but could you leave some more detail in this area? So what some people have been saying in the comments of these videos is, hey, like t talk a little bit more about like the fees and like the profit and, and all that kind of stuff that goes into an LAX drop off. So I'll go into a little bit more detail on that today, uh, documenting the journey from where I live uh, in Van Nuys, close to the flyaway bus, down to LAX, dropping off the car, flyaway bus shuttle back to close to where I live, and then the electric scooter back to my house. Um, the fee that you charge for an LAX drop-off as a host, you can choose anywhere from $0 all the way up to a maximum of $120. The reason why I do the maximum personally is kind of that supply and demand question of it seems like other rental car companies in the area like the larger rental car companies their prices are still so high that even with a hundred and twenty dollar delivery fee for me as a Turo host you still have people renting the cars a lot through the platform so um, secondly I have to try to keep in mind the time that it takes for me to do these deliveries and the transportation to and from. Because sometimes I'll have like a friend nicely volunteer to like drive me one of the directions if they're like not busy or whatever. But I have to plan for that to not be the case. I don't want to be like that kind of friend that's like mooching off of their friends. Um, so I have to plan for transportation each direction. And then sometimes people need to either pick up or drop off their rental car at a time where I'm either at my day job or asleep. <laughs> so I got a plan for a local parking garage down by LAX that has free shuttle service for the renters to be using. So I'll be really detailing out today the profit, the loss, the expenses, the income for this entire journey. For example, today, it's early on a Saturday morning. I have nothing going on, technically. I, I would love to be asleep if I had the choice, but I have nothing going on. So it's like, why not, why not just like drive the car down to this person, get the flyaway shuttle back. So that's easy. When they return the car in about a week on Friday, they'll be returning the car at approximately 4.30 a.m. <laughs> I'm not trying to wake up at 3 a.m. So I'll have them park the car down at a local parking garage. I already have the parking prepaid. To me, that comes out of the $120 delivery fee that I charge the renter. So I already have that prepaid. So I'll send them in the app, I'll upload the QR code that they'll need to scan to put the car into the parking garage. And then at some point on Friday, uh, when I'm done with my personal training, done with my day job, I'll go and obviously pick up the car with the flyaway shuttle going down there, just one direction, and then I'll drive the car back, obviously, and do the checkout process there. But um, probably about 10 or so minutes away from the airport right now. The sun's coming up, looks like another beautiful Southern California day. I do have the taco tank on. It's not Taco Tuesday, but if you live your life the right way, any day can be Taco Tuesday. <laughs> All right, so 7 a.m. got here to the airport. So now I'm gonna try to take the pre-trip photos. You really wanna make sure you document 
the car's condition really well. Um, just in case you have to file a claim, you want really, really detailed photos and a lot of them. Luckily, a lot of people will take very good care of your car. Just document it just in case. All right, so got the pre-trip photos all done. It took only about 10 minutes. I usually take like at least 50 photos pre-trip, like really detailed, like what do the rims look like? What are the tire conditions? What's the tire tread depth? Um, interior condition photos, exterior at all angles. So I like to really document uh, as good as I can uh, the condition of the car. So now it's around 7, 10 a.m. just waiting for the renter's flight to arrive and to go meet them at the terminal. Um, I think they said that they'll need the car at 7.30, so just kind of playing the uh, waiting game now. All right, it's 7.27. My Turo renter uh, just let me know that they landed. So they did check bags. I did ask and kind of set that up beforehand. So I'll give them a couple minutes to grab their bags. I'm going to meet them on the departures level of LAX. It's like way less crazy. <laughs> Um, so I'll probably give them like about five minutes and, and meet them there and uh, get the car checked out to them. And then once I do that, I'll be finding the flyaway bus to take me back to Van Nuys. All right, so now I got the car parked at LAX waiting for the renter to grab their bags. It's right around 749. So uh, hopefully I'm able to pass the car off to them soon. Hopefully they're able to get their bags with no problem. All right, got a little lucky with the timing with the flyaway bus was able to pick that up right away. It's right around 8.05. I think the trip up to the Van Nuys Terminal will take around 30 minutes. So uh, it should be around 8.30ish when we get up there. So we'll see. <laughs> Got the scooter with me. It takes up like basically its own whole seat. <laughs> All right, so just got dropped off by the flyaway bus here at the Van Nuys Terminal. So now I got a scooter ride, which is foldable and super convenient, which I love. Should be about 10 minutes to get to the house, which will put me right at 840, which is exactly two hours of a process to drop off the escape. Sometimes it's a little faster, sometimes a little slower. I need to try to get a little bit better at like timing the flyaway bus and dropping off the car with the person getting their bags, but not bad timing. <laughs> little uh, casual Saturday morning. Here. All right, all right. So one thing I wanted to do with this Turo business is make sure with these YouTube videos that I'm addressing a lot of people's comments of what does the numbers look like in terms of profit, um, expenses, everything kind of put together. So uh, on this slide, I'll go through this LAX drop-off and return for the Ford Escape. I'll be pointing things out with my fancy ruler. <laughs> so with uh, no further ado, we'll get started with our Turo Profit PowerPoint. So LAX, uh, one of the most popular airports in the world. This is all of the terminals of LAX. One thing um, that us Angelinos are super excited about and people probably traveling into LA are going to be excited about too is in time for the Olympics coming up, the people mover, a monorail system, basically coming from over by La Cienega all the way through the terminal system, which is going to really limit the amount of traffic in the terminal system because that monorail is going to connect to LA Metro, which is uh, LA's subway station. So uh, we'll be getting hopefully a lot less traffic in the airport. But for now, it is very hectic and busy, which hopefully this uh, map kind of shows. <laughs> Just uh, the scale of this is insane, uh, where these are major roads and they're tiny on this map. <laughs> kind of incredible. What I do with my LAX drop-offs is I use the flyaway bus because there is a terminal literally like down the street from where I live, luckily. So I'll just like ride my little electric scooter all the way to the flyaway bus station and then take the bus down to the airport if the car is being returned by the renter. Or if I'm dropping off the car at the airport for the renter, I'll find a local parking garage that has a good deal for that day and I'll ride my electric scooter to the flyaway bus pickups on the LAX terminal map, which we saw here, all of these terminals on the lower level, the red line, every single terminal has a pickup station for the flyaway bus. So uh, typically with no traffic at all, <laughs> the, 
the flyaway bus trip, 28 minutes with zero traffic. I looked at this at like 10 p.m. one night when I was thinking there would be no traffic, and there there isn't. We got a blue line on Google Maps all the way down and through. Luckily, no traffic, thank God, at 10 p.m. But as you can imagine, there's certain times of the day where you don't want to do that trip. <laughs> Instead of 28 minutes, we're looking at something like an hour sometimes. Kind of incredible. So timing is important with this. Um, this corridor of the 405 where it goes through the mountains is called the Sepulveda Pass. It's one of the busiest traffic corridors in America. Um, so you definitely want to plan ahead for that. <laughs> All right. So no further ado, getting into some of the revenue and expenses numbers uh, for this particular trip. The renter had the escape for six days. Total revenue before expenses, $471.50. Turo takes a cut of that for things like insurance, which I've covered in other videos, and I'll probably cover again at some point, but not today for the purpose of uh, time. <laughs> but uh, Turo's cut of the $471.50, they take $182.60 for hosting, connecting me with a renter, providing insurance, blah, 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 <laughs> and TV commercials, which you guys may have seen. So my gross revenue for this, $288.90 for a six-day trip. So of that $288.90, what I wanted to try to do is, after listing revenue, also list any expenses applicable to the trip. So I got $288.90 as my top-line revenue. Flyaway bus ticket, remember, there and back two times. It's only $9.75 for a one-way ticket, thank God. Because a Lyft or an Uber ride can be $60, $70, depending on surge pricing, things of that nature. It can get pretty spendy. So for me to only spend $19.50 for two tickets, not bad. I'll take that. I wanted to take into consideration for my expenses labor costs with this as well. What I'm seeing with this particular flyaway bus trip this time, I talked about this a little bit earlier on in the video, is it took a really long time to do the drop off and get back uh, just with traffic and things of that nature. So it was a two hour drop off, only a 45 minute pickup. And that's the difference of traffic that you're seeing there. 15 minutes of messages basically to the renter. It's passive income kind of being a Toro host, uh, but there's definitely uh, some work going in there. So as a business owner, I didn't wanna be taking a lot of money out of the revenue um, in terms of labor costs for that. I wanted to be able to reinvest back into the business. So what I'm doing is just paying myself $20 an hour. I think at the time of this recording, minimum wage is like 15 bucks in California. So I wanted to give myself a, a little tip, <laughs> but nothing crazy. So three hours, basically, two hours, 45 minutes, 15 minutes, I'll put together three hours of labor costs at $20 an hour. Puts us at 60 as part of the expenses. I paid for a parking garage for the escape, which ended up being $22.21. What this does is help me maximize my schedule because I'm not always available to do an in-person drop off or return for the car. So I'm able to drop it off at a parking garage, have it wait there for a couple hours with a lock box on the window with a key and a code that I message to the renter, make sure that they're ready to go with that. So if we take top line gross revenue, subtracted by all the expenses on this screen, We'll keep this number in mind for the next screen, 187.19, as we go into some more expenses here. So I wanted to keep in mind that I have a car loan on this car and I obviously have to pay insurance as well, but we'll go on to that in the next screen. So if we take 187.19 from a previous screen, we go into my daily car ownership price is 215 for the month divided by 30 days for a month. Daily, it cost me $7.16 to pay for the car note for the Ford Escape. So if we multiply that by a six-day trip for this particular trip, then my expense is $42.96 just for the car ownership. So to subtract that from what is $7.19, subtract the $42.96 from the car payment, $144.23 is what we'll take to the next page. And this will be expenses continued, including insurance price. So. I think my insurance is a little bit higher because I just had a claim with a Kia that I used to own last year. So I don't think $120 is a, like standard or typical by any means, but that's my monthly cost. It's going to be different for everybody. Um, divided by 30, obviously, for the daily insurance price, $4.33. 
So if we multiply that out by the six day trip, then what we're gonna look at is $25.98 for my insurance costs divided by the month there. What's interesting about that expense on this slide is Turo pays for the insurance for the trip, but what I'm doing is looking at the escape as a business asset and any expense attached to that business asset, I'm putting onto this expenses screen, even though my insurance is not a part of the Turo trip. Hopefully uh, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> I paid for an unlimited car wash pass for the Escape. I've gone over that in uh, some videos, but um, it's called Blue Wash Express down the street. I love it there. Um, really quick, good service. Um, I'm able to get in and out quickly. I have like a little process down and having it down the street is super convenient too. And for me, the cost of $33 a month is more than worth it since I basically live there. I might as well pay them rent. <laughs> So we look at that as a daily cost of a dollar and 10 cents multiplied by six for days on the trip, $6 and 60 cents. So you take $144 and 23 cents of leftover revenue from previous pages and subtract that from the expenses on this slide, which is 25.98 and 660, getting us to 11165 for the next page. This, summary of profit and loss will make accountants happily happy hopefully as i list everything out <laughs> just like they would maybe there's a accountants watching this video that can correct me but to me this looks decent <laughs> it's just a, a business owner person just kind of looking at the numbers so we look at top line revenue here 471.50 so that's before any expenses anything what i could do to maximize that in theory is do less insurance coverage from turo um, the option that they have is a 93% share where the owner keeps 93%. I do 60% share just because I like the peace of mind of having them cover any damages that may happen. But let's say I you know, wanted to keep more of this top line revenue. I could change that Turo fee, but that brings us down to 288.90 for gross revenue. And then after all expenses, which I just went through, the net profit that I can reinvest back into the business for this particular trip, only six days, $111.16. Turo isn't necessarily easy for the host, um, but I would classify it as a passive income stream. Um, like I showed on the labor slide, I do like two hours of this for every trip at most. Um, so let's say I even wanted to pay myself $30 an hour, then instead of 60, we're looking at 90. And instead of 111.16 for net profit, we're looking at 81.16 and I'm paying myself more. So it, to me, it's profitable enough where every person that asks me, hey, how's Turo Host going for you? Is that something that I should look into doing? Every time someone asks me that, I always encourage them to give it a try. If you have any interest at all, I would definitely encourage that you give it a shot. I have found it to be very profitable. I've done, I think, 20 trips so far. Stay tuned with this channel. I'll be posting a lot on my journey to be a super host with Turo, uh, hopefully coming up very soon. Um, if you found value in this content, I hope that you like the video. That does actually uh, make a big difference with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, whatever you thought was very beneficial for you in this, video, please leave a comment on there. I do read all of the comments and I'm able to kind of tailor my uh, approach with the content in terms of what people are commenting on. If there's something that you'd like me to be posting on, please leave that comment as well. I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will be talking with you guys hopefully very soon.